Hey everyone, Veronica Belmont here. Welcome back to Fact or Fictional, the show where we look at cool tech and science from your favorite TV shows, movies, video games, and comic books and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Well, last week was one of my favorite episodes that we've done so far. It was about the weird seasons that we experience in Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire, of course, by George R. R. Martin. Are we gonna get some kind of 30-year winter coming up? Well, a lot of you had comments about this on the YouTube video. Cosmic GM said, for example, without the development of more efficient and clean energy sources, mankind is going to keep fouling up the atmosphere, in turn creating weirder and more extreme weather patterns till a 30-year winter will sound like a nice change of pace. Ouch. Halo person has similar ideas, but on a longer timeline. Thank goodness, maybe I'll be dead by then. Now, without going like, humans are the only reason why this is happening, chances are it happened many times way before humans existed. I don't think it will happen anytime soon, not in our lifetime, especially within the next few years because of solar maximum. But I do think it will happen, and it most likely won't be as drastic as portrayed in Game of Thrones, maybe just a few degrees. And speaking of Halo, I know that was not planned at all, but this is actually kind of cool. Uh, new Xbox announcement in four days as of the airing of this show. So I think that's May 21st. Thank you, producer Michael, May 21st. And so we have a, a pretty good episode for you about something that you see a lot in science fiction games and on movies and TV shows, and that is plasma weapons. And to discuss that today, we are bringing on John Strickland from How Stuff Works, one of our cousins at the Discovery Networks, to talk about just that. John Strickland, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me on. I'm really thrilled to be here. So now, what exactly is a plasma weapon and why is it so popular in science fiction? Well, a plasma weapon is a weapon that fires, hang on, plasma. <laughs> wait I think for it, wait for I, it, plasma. Yeah. So plasma, essentially, in most games, I would say it's, it's kind of a glob globular energy goo. That's what it tends to look like in most in most games and science fiction films, that sort of thing. And I think the reason it's popular is because it sounds science fiction-y. When I did the episode on lightsabers, a lot of the YouTube commenters got all worked up because they were like, it's not actually a laser, it's a plasma weapon. Is that true? Well, I would say that a lightsaber is what we call magic because Really, that's what Lucas referred to it. He called it the magic sword. I don't mean to upset all the hardcore uh, Star Wars fans out there. I mean, live long and prosper, right? Oh, you are gonna get murdered in your sleep tonight. You just wait for that. <laughs> so do we have anything like this today, plasma weapon wise, non lightsaber wise I'm talking about? Well, we've got some things that we use plasma for. We have plasma torches, which we use to cut through sheet metal and, and other materials. We also have plasma torches that can vaporize stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then there's some weapons that we have that could create a plasma upon contact, which rapidly expands, causing what I understand to be uh, intense pain and sometimes will shut down a person's nervous system, which I think most of us would say would be a bad thing. Be an effective weapon for sure. Yes, yeah. Kevin Lee, uh, at Mr. Kun Lee on Twitter wants to know, how would it be able to contain the plasma? I've heard of it using a magnetic field, but is that actually possible? Well, right now, things like plasma torches, we don't actually contain the plasma at all. We generate the plasma. So what you do is you start with a pressurized gas and you can use any of the noble gases. They are ideal for this. You then use electrodes to create a very high voltage spark and you then ionize the gas. You transfer that energy from the electrodes to the gas. You strip the gas of its electrons. It becomes a plasma. And it's really effective at a very, very tiny distance. But the nice thing is you don't have to worry about some weird containment field to keep the plasma safe. Now, if you were to some, for some reason, to generate the plasma beforehand and have it contained within the weapon, you would use a magnetic bottle. That's a magnetic field that will contain the plasma. The plasma is electromagnetic in nature, meaning it has a magnetic charge. So by using a, a magnetic field, you could contain it, which is important because plasma, depending upon what gas you use and how much energy you poured into it, uh, gets pretty hot, like hotter than the core of the sun in some cases. Jared Thompson wants to know, how would you reload a plasma weapon? Uh, is, is there some way that you'd be able to recharge it automatically? Again, if you're not generating the plasma, 
ahead of time, then you wouldn't have like a, a plasma clip that contains this ionized gas. You would just have pressurized gas moving through your weapon, and then you would uh, ionize it. You, you would use those electrodes or whatever form of energy you're, you're using to pour into it to generate the plasma. Uh, but that's another problem. It takes a lot of energy to do that. So you would have to have a massive battery pack or some other source of energy in order to create the plasma in the first place. Uh, that means that right now, plasma rifles, plasma pistols, even if we could figure out a way to weaponize it, would not be portable at all. You would have to have you know 18 guys carrying your battery packs around so you could get one shot off. Why even use plasma weapons instead of regular bullets? I would understand in a space kind of setting that you wouldn't want to be firing bullets around because uh, once you shoot something through the hull of the ship, that would be kind of a problem. But mm -hmm. it sounds to me like plasma would be just as dangerous uh, in that kind of enclosed environment. It, it would be dangerous, but mostly it would be ineffective because we don't have a way of making the plasma bolt retain its shape, right? It, as soon as it emerges from the gun, it starts to dissipate, it starts to float away. Even in the vacuum of space where you don't have atmosphere to worry about, the plasma bolt's not going to cohere. It's not going to stay a bolt. And finally, Steve Kendall wants to know, when will I be able to mount one on the front of my bumper? Hmm. Well, I think a plasma torch you can mount right now, it wouldn't be terribly effective unless you come into direct contact with sheet metal on a regular basis, in which case I don't want to ride with you. So John, I'm going to say that this sounds fictional. It sounds like plasma weapons are probably not in our immediate or possibly ever future. I think that plasma is very practical for other applications, for things like fusion reactors, it's fantastic. Or for the potential of a plasma waste converter, that's awesome. But when it comes to weapons, I think that it's just not really, it's just not practical. Gotcha. And now where can people follow all of your work online? Well, right now I've got a brand new project called Forward Thinking. I'm really excited about it. And uh, you can find that at fwthinking.com. It's all about the future and it's awesome. I really, really want you guys to check it out. And if you want to just follow me on Twitter, I'm at John Strickland. That's John, J-O-N. Awesome. We'll definitely have you back on the show sometime, John. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, I have to say I'm not too surprised that plasma weapons will not be in our immediate or ever future, probably, um, especially considering the massive amount of energy it would take to generate that plasma, and also the fact that it needs that magnetic containment in order for it to actually be used as a projectile. It just seems a little bit too complicated, even for us, and we love complicated things. But speaking of complicated things, we have a live Google Hangout coming up very soon on May 31st. It's going to be me, it's going to be some of the guests you've seen previously on the show, maybe someone like Joe Hansen or Anthony Carboni. Um, so if there's anyone else you want to see in the live Google Hangout, let me know in the YouTube comments below. We're going to be talking about science and technology and cool stuff from sci-fi and fantasy and all the TV shows and movies that we all love watching. So stay tuned for that. It is going to be May 31st at time 3 p.m. Pacific. 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Make sure you look for new episodes of Factor Fictional every Friday right here on TechFeed. And let me know what you want to see on the show. I'm always open to suggestions. Until next time, I am Veronica. You've been watching Factor Fictional. Let me know what you want to see at Veronica. See you later. Pew, 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 pew.